Well, hello. It's uh, Thursday. That means it's time for my midweek posting. I was supposed to call it coffee on Thursday, remember? And then the temperatures rose and rose and it's blaring hot and uh, drinking a hot beverage is maybe not the right thing to do at the moment. So, or maybe it is. Maybe hot tea and hot coffee is actually the right thing to drink at the moment. But then I changed the name into Ramblings with Jack and it is my Ramblings with Jack today. Now I called it Coffee Thursday because I post on Thursday, but then realized that actually you might, you might not even watch this on a Thursday. So I don't know if, know if that's such a good idea to call it something on Thursday. It's just me talking about my life, the universe and everything. Today, I just wanted to take you somewhere, which is basically just around the corner. But before I do that, I always have a little introduction, just in case that you come across my channel and you think like, who is this man rambling? Well, hello, my name is Jack, and this is uh, Dean, my little van, my little Ford Transit, 2012, um, short wheel base, very short, Sorry, so very short, very low, and I converted it into a livable space, I would say, a space that I like. Um, so, you know, I've been cruising around Europe in it for the past six months, um, or seven months already, or August, eight months. Shh. My God, time is flying. And since, since the beginning of the year, I, already, I also have this uh, YouTube channel in which I try to document my life on the road, my adventures, the people I meet or don't meet. Uh, I am kind of the, I'm an introvert. People didn't believe me that the first time I said it out loud. Uh, somebody sort of said, well, you're being very exhibitionistic in your videos. And I don't think people really grasp the, the idea of being, of what it means to be an, in, being an introvert. And I think most people really don't know what exactly it means being an introvert. It's got nothing to do with shyness or exhibitionist or whatever. It is more that I like my own space. I, I'm very difficult with people, although I can be charming and, you know, funny and witty with people. It is just I tend to avoid people and that's why I like the way I live in a van, in a stealth van. That means I can just like park up somewhere, be anonymous, do my thing, don't have to talk to people, um, don't have to interact with anybody, I just do my thing. And then when I'm ready to interact or for human contact, then I can find it. And that's what being an introvert means to me. Um, I'm sure there's other definitions, but for me it means basically love my own space, love, I'm always being busy with my own thoughts, so it is then very very difficult to accept other people's conversations and thoughts into this already full head. So that's why I like uh, stealth living, that's why I use the app Park for Night as so many other people do, be it, you know, RV people, camper vans, um, caravans, everybody who's on the road uses Park for Night. Which means that there are a lot of reviews and there's a lot of places and sometimes, again, with the brain being so full, it is very, very difficult to choose. And so I ended up in this place rather um, well, unexpectedly, really, because a couple of days ago, let me gr grab the drink, uh, grab my keys. Oops. A couple of days ago, I, let me close it, there you go. I, the Park for, the Park for Night app went down. And that means that I was totally at a loss because I didn't know where to park for that one night or for the next night. So um, I did what I always do. My backup plan is IKEA. So I went on the Google and I found the nearest IKEA and, you know, spend the night on that parking lot, which is 
not very glamorous, but it, it, it is what it is, and sometimes it's just what you need. Anyway, the um, Park for Night app is up and running again, so I looked in the vicinity of my IKEA and I found this place. Now, Park for Night is a really, really strange app because for every park up that they advertise, there's always everything from one star to five stars. There's always somebody really hating it and there's always somebody really, really loving it. So this place I just ended up is one of those places. One star and five stars. So I thought I'd give it a shot because of the location. I'll show you the location in a minute because I, as you can see, I just, I'm just walking down the street and there's a lake just around the corner and how beautiful is that? Oh, sorry, I, uh, I nearly uh, dropped you there. I just wanted to show you the lake uh, behind me. But uh, let me walk with you first. So um, oh, back to that um, Park for Night app, and I, I don't want to promote them because I'm not getting paid by them at all, um, because I'm sure there's other providers as well. But it's an app where you can basically do a search for any parking uh, place for uh, campers. Um, camping sites where you pay or just ordinary like IKEA parking lots where you can just park for free uh, or like stealth campers like me but you can also ask for like nature places this is for instance one of these places that I um, I asked the app like is there anywhere that I can park near nature or in nature even without being fined um, you can also um, in the search, uh, you can also tick the farmers' places because there are a couple of farmers, well, loads of farmers, I'm sure, that offer, you know, a, a, a place on their farm. And that's how I ended up on a potato farm in Holland. Um, that video will come out soon or is out. Um, you'll have to have a look in my, in my, <laughs> in my YouTube channel. But that was a lovely place, um, you know, all alone on a farm somewhere. So I ended up on this place uh, near the lake and this is one of the other options is where people, private people, offer like their backyard or like a spare parking space on, on you know, in their home uh, for like a couple of euros or a couple of dollars where you can just spend the night and use, um, you know, a bit of their electricity and of their water like for just a couple of quid or just for the company. And the lady I've just ended up at uh, is really, really lovely. I think she, she, she read me, let's put it that way, straight away. She greeted me and sort of looked, um, you know, like there's the spot. And she left me alone for the, the most part of the day and the night. And then when she felt that I kind of wanted to talk and felt like, you know, like some company, she, she approached me again. And then we had a lovely evening together. And... Uh, we talked about, you know, life, the universe and everything. So, so that's the Park for Night app. And then, you know, okay, so it's all been lovely. And the weird thing is, when something is lovely, we tend not to write it in a review. Do you? I don't. It's only when it goes horribly wrong that I straight away want to write a review, be it on uh, Park for Night or on, you know, any Google app, really, uh, you know, a restaurant or like uh, a sports center or whatever. I never write a positive review. I don't know about you, but uh, maybe I should do that because, um, the, yeah, I never think of, uh, you know, picking up a pen or, you know, getting behind the keyboard and writing something positive, which is really strange, isn't it? That we are, you know, that our brains are wired like that, always the negative, always the negative. And that's why, you know, when you look up on Park for Night, there are so many one star reviews on places because basically people are much quicker to say something is something nasty than something positive. When I was in Holland, um, totally unrelated story about uh, parking now, but when I was in Holland, 
I looked on the Google just what's in my area and there wasn't really a lot in my area but there was um, there was a baker with sourdough just a sourdough bakery and it closed at 5 in the afternoon on a Saturday and it was 4.30 and I thought you know what if I jump on my bike I'll get there I'll get there on time and I did and the baker he was still there and he said like I'm sorry but totally sold out but he was really nice and pleasant and he, he did everything you know to accommodate me and talked about his job and uh, you know like what sourdough he uses because there's a difference between the German sourdough and a Dutch or a French sourdough in taste and um, so, so, so we talked for like and half an hour way past his um, closing time and then he sort of said you know what if you don't mind I, I still have some frozen bread and uh, oh, I'll have to go down here you know I can sell you that and you can try and then you can write me a review on, on Google <laughs> that's basically it and again it's like a week later now and the, the bread was lovely the guy was lovely friendly and it's a week later now and I still haven't written that positive review Hmm, and that's for Google. Talking about Google, by the way, so Google owns YouTube, doesn't it? And <laughs> remember last week in my, uh, my ramblings on Thursday, last week, I was, uh, well, being a bit negative about YouTube, really. And there's a follow-up to that story, uh, which is positive and negative again, which I wanted to share with you, because because a week later, not even a week later after I posted my video, I got this email from, uh, fr from YouTube saying how good a job I was doing at the moment. And, um, you know, and to thank me or to congratulate me doing a good job, they offered me a coffee voucher. I thought like, no, that's my thing. I, I do the buy me a coffee thing, you know, dot com. Um, but yeah, they offered to buy me a coffee as well, somewhere in Germany. I have a voucher for it. And not only that, they were also going to send me a lamp. I think I'm just going to, you know, post a picture of the lamp here. They're going to send me a lamp, a YouTube lamp, which I could use in the background. It's going to be difficult in the van, but still, I thought like, oh, how lovely that is as well. So, you know, that's where the positive ends. Because then the day after that, I got, um, I got an email from YouTube again saying like, oh, could I do a five question survey for them? And I think like, well, you know, you're being so nice to me. I will, I will do that survey. And the five questions were really, really bizarre. And that's why I thought like, well, why are they asking me these questions? I mean, the first thing was like the age range. And I, I, I didn't take too many screen grabs because I, I, it went by before I could even realize what was going on. But it was like the age range. And the next one was already like, are you an immigrant or do, do you have a migration background? And I thought like, that's a bit weird. And then the third question was like, do you belong to the LGBTQI community? And I thought like, why do you want to know that? I mean, what, 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 you know, what good is that to you? And then the next question, I think it was the last one already, was like, do you identify as trans? And I'm thinking, what's this got to do with a travel channel on YouTube? But why are you asking me these five questions? Is this what you want to know? Is this what the world is coming to? Like, what? Why? I mean, just why? That's it. Just why? <sighs> but there you go. So, so that, that was like my negative and positive. I wonder what Google, because they listen. Let's be honest, they listen to what we're saying. So I am <laughs> curious to find out after I have my little rambling today, um, how they're going to respond to that one with another questionnaire, another coffee, another, another lamp. Who knows? Okay, back to van life. And I'm starting to regret that word van life now because it's hashtag van life. It's van life in my titles on YouTube. It's van life when I say it. So I think I need another word for it, don't I? I mean, you know, can somebody suggest me another word for van life? 
So I've been here a couple of days now and it's time to move on and, uh, you know, continue my trip to Scandinavia. So it's back on, uh, uh, on Google and on the park for night uh, app because I think I need to find another spot in the next city. And um, not sure about you, but you know, when you present me with a menu of too many choices on the menu, my kind of brain freezes and goes like, oh, I don't know, I can't choose. Same with Park for Night. If you pick a city, if it's a city, there's like hundreds of parking possibilities and hundreds of reviews. And I can't pick, and I can't really pick. And, and it is very difficult you know, okay, you, you base your, your, your choice, of course, on those reviews again. Uh, and then the problem is sometimes you arrive and you go like, no, this is not for me. But by that time, you've already driven three or four hours. You're tired and you think like, okay, I'll, I'll just try another one. And then you jump in the van and, you know, drive another 20 minutes. And then you go to the next one and you think like, oh, that's not really me either. Um, you know, like, oh, shall, shall I try a third one? Because, you know, luck's not on my side. And then you try another one. And then, you know, in the end, you just say like, okay, you know, stuff it. I'm, I'm just going to sleep here. going to, you know, you know, have a bad night or whatever. And then you wake up in the morning and typical in the morning, you pay, take your bike just, you know, to explore the surroundings. And then there's the perfect spot just 100 meters down the road. And you think, why didn't I see that one last night? And that's the thing with uh, van life, which, um, which probably, probably people don't realize if you're sitting at home and not doing it, is the, the continuous quest for a nice and peaceful night or a, a place where you feel si safe as well. Um, you know, we only see the Instagram and the YouTube videos, but uh, before that, um, people, you know, have to look and find a place that is suitable for them. And, and that sometimes is really, really difficult and stressful and tiresome. So, you know, it's not all fun and lakes and, and beaches and, and sun. It's sometimes also hard work, although people think that we don't work hard and we don't have stress and all that, but we do. But then, you know, this balances it out. Let's put it that way. I think I've rambled enough again. Um, I just keep on getting compliments that people like my voice. Maybe not what I'm saying, but it's just like the soothing voice. And maybe I am, you know, putting you to sleep with this soothing voice. But I'll keep doing the, the, the Thursday ramblings. And um, if you want to listen, then feel free to listen and look at me. And, um, and if you don't, I won't hold it against you on Sundays. As per usual, there will be a travel vlog of where I've been the past week. <sighs> I'm nearly at the da Danish border. So there you go. We finally are getting towards Scandinavia because let's be honest, that was the plan. So um, I hope you still join me on my, uh, my trip to sunny Scandinavia. And uh, I'll check in with you next Thursday for another, sorry, no coffee, but another Thursday Ramblings with Jack. Take care for now, over and out.